So hello everyone and thank you for joining us for Handmade Chelsea Online. We are being joined by Clara Hancock who is a textile artist and she's going to be guiding us through some of the processes and methods that she uses to create her wonderful colourful pieces. As always, please feel free to ask any questions in the chat box provided. And now I'm going to pass it over to you, Clara. Thank you, thank you very much, Lucky. I am very, I am very pleased to welcome everyone that is joining to my talk. I will divide my talk in four areas. First of all, I will talk about myself because that has contributed, the past contributes to the present. So I have a study philosophy and aesthetics in Colombia. Then I follow a course in history of art in the L'Ecole du Louvre in Paris. And in England, I have done several um, courses in history of art, but I also have done sculpture, ceramics, a glass fusion, um, and uh, also um, drawing, um, printing, which contributed a lot to my work. I have experience with uh, lino cuts, wood blocks, silk screen printing, monoprint, and drawing. Um, I have um, also um, have um, decided to choose textiles and in particularly silk because in the silk I can put uh, and express my feelings. Um, generally silk is wonderful because it's very versatile uh, by putting the color you produce a uh, vibrancy and richness and also it is adaptable if you it's cold in summer can be cool in summer and can be warm in winter when you wear it. So it has every advantage. Now, my inspiration generally comes from my experiences of life, listening to music, uh, to a poem. And um, for example, one of my pieces here is inspired by the, by the music. Also traveling, uh, traveling has influenced a lot to create ideas. This came, for example, from a trip to Australia where the beautiful landscape of, or of oranges and blues and emerald greens come from. Also walking in a, in a park or walking in a walk. Now, for example, in, in autumn, you can see, for example, this piece that has been inspired by the leaves found in the ground. My, as I, I mentioned, also traveling is one of my hobbies and that contributes a lot to my work. I mentioned, uh, for example, this one, which is in the exhibition, is on sale in the, in the fair, is, has been inspired by Japan. I love uh, Japan, I enjoy looking at it. This one, for example, has been in, inspired by the silk. Algae, looking at the sea in a sunny day, you can see all these reflections in the water that I contribute also to my work. Now, the process of making silk. Um, what do you need to make a piece of silk? You need a frame, a frame. Um, you, you use or a stretcher uh, in order to have the, the, this is what you need. This is a type of frame that I would use. And then you need masking tape. Of course, the silk, which you can see here in this frame, where I have put or attached the frame to the piece. It's not properly done. It has to be very, very, very stretched. So why? Because with doing that, you can draw without spoiling the silk. Now, what else do you need? Do you need water? Do you, you need also brushes? Once you have the frame that I show you with the silicone, you can dump the, the silk with water. Then you use color. Here is one of the colors that you can use. And then you run it on top of the water and kind of guide it with the brush. You can also use resist. Why resist? Because you need to thicken the color in order to draw. Here you can, this is my pen. It's called Epipet. It's, it's kind, it contains a um, color mix with the resist to make it thicker and to um, to kind of enable you to draw. Uh, for example, here you see the frame. Unfortunately, I don't have the surface, flat surface here at the moment. 
But if you look at it, I just simply draw with it. Then once you, you paint and draw, and you are more or less pleased with the, the, the piece, you leave it dry. And then you could use other methods such as printing. One of the things that I mentioned before is that I have been doing still printing lino cuts. This is one of my lino cuts still deteriorating of the use I have given uh, that I done for one of the pieces. That's another small one to produce pattern with lino. And these are, this is a shape I cut from a piece of foam, which you could also use as a pattern to the design. Another type of material such as foam that I also carve to produce the piece. Wood blocks, you can see wood blocks here. And I also have um, a silk screen. I prepare my silk screen and I do that in the silk so you can use it. I can also even use leaves. These are fields I find walking just down the corner in my house. So I have printing and that I did yesterday. And this is a work of prog in progress. You can see here how I put the, the, the I printed the leaves, I draw them, it, it's not finished yet, it needs to be fixing and, and do it again. Now, the, the, I show you the process and all what you need for making the silk briefly, but if you would like to see further, I have a YouTube that you call Clara Hancock Silk that you can see and open. Now, my products, what sort of products I do? I did different things. I have fashion. So the blouse I am wearing, I am just turning around, is one of the ones that I have made, the same as the little scarf here. But I have another blouse that is in the show. This is a, a blouse that I have done during the lockdown by working in the garden. And you can see it's a blouse jacket. You can use it either as a jacket or a blouse. Um, I also have in the exhibition and I also do as part of the fashion ties. This is one of the ties I have made inspired by one of my visits in the countryside. Another one, another tie which is still is also in the show uh, in, my, in my shop in virtual show, virtual exhibition and I have another one here that is also there. So what else I do? I use also hangings for wood. I, 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 just, I have a, um, a photograph which I couldn't put now, so I cannot show you, but if you see my um, opening, you can see the uh, very decorative piece that is in the landing in my daughter's house. I have also done several hangings, but they are of a size that can be 180 by 90, or 90 by 90 or 180 by 50. These are more or less the sides or 150 by 40 for decorative pieces that can be used as a scroll or, or a decorative piece. And accessories. I have several accessories that range from 55 by 55. The one that I am wearing here is one of them up to, up to 90 by 90 or 180 by 50. They can be used as a scarves as they can be used as, um, uh, as, as a hanging. Uh, here you have, for example, this piece called Garden is in the show. And it is 90 by 90. More or, more or less the price of one of these pieces is about 100 pounds. But I also have pieces that can be um, 50 pounds onwards up to 500. So those can be seen in the show. I wonder if there is any questions that you would like to ask. So I will be very pleased to, to answer them. Hi, Clara. Yes, so we have a question. Um, so one of the questions is, how long does it take you to, to make a scarf? Well, that is a very tricky question. You really, if you have to do one, it will take you very long time. Because by the time that you start to do the, the job, by the time that you fix it, it's no less than two to three days. But I generally work in a sequence. So I have an idea and I say how I develop this idea. I, I am going to work with, let's say, music. So I said, how, how many pieces I could do? What is type of music inspire me? 
So I put a set of three. And I work with them, not at the same time, but uh, just little by little, move from one to the other and arrange the music in such a way or doing this piece in the other way. And that is helpful because then it takes less time. And it's, I am really working with three pieces, which is quite enjoyable because you have to uh, be kind of functional and quick. Right, and also, what is your favorite fabric to work with? Silk is my favorite, but as, as you know, there are several types of silk. Silk range from the very, very thin one. I have a little piece here. I didn't put in the show because it's very difficult to photograph, which is very, very light. It's called chiffon. This is one of them. And to thick one, which is velvet. Velvet is the thicker material. But I use uh, how tie, I use crepe de chine, I use um, twill, I use um, uh, dupont, I use different, different types. So we have, there is a range of quite a lot because it all depends on the width of the silk. I show you the piece of, the very thin piece, the very light piece that is, that is um, chiffon. Then you find another one which is thicker, but more or less transparent, is called Georgia chiffon. Then you have another light and very beautiful one, which is crepe de chine. And then the one that I generally use is habotai, but I also, also use crepe de chine, also use chiffon, as you have seen. Uh, I also use Georgia chiffon, I use velvet, and I can also mix velvet with wool, and that's called nunofelt. I didn't have one of these pieces because they are, I found it more mechanical, not so artistic and expressive as I find to wear directly with the silk. Wonderful. Um, so just quickly, could you uh, stand up and show some of your pieces so we can see them um, more clearer? Yeah, yeah, I can probably, starting with my, with my yeah. cloud, you can see that one. I can show you, this is another one, this is a lemon one inspired by the warmth of the, of the tropics. And you can see that one. Wonderful. Then there is the one that I showed you before, music, uh, inspired by music. Then uh, I showed you already the garden. And then I have, I was talking about the seaside and the algae and the inspiration and the smallest of my pieces. One piece like this one will be around 50 pounds. That's the cheapest I have in the show. Then, so I wanted you to have an idea of that. Um, this one, I don't have it in the show, but it's quite interesting in the, so, as a source of inspiration of my work. It's based on leaves, leaves of any kind. I don't know if it's clear enough for you to see the different yes, kinds yes, of clear. leaves in the background. Uh, but I have a similar one I've seen in, in going to the show. I mean, I have a, a, quite a number of products I haven't put yet but they will be replaced in any other product that I sell by those. This also is another one. This is quite thick. This is satin, um, again, satin silk. All of it that I do is silk, uh, but different widths. The one that my jacket has is thick habotai, but the, the one that I show you that I have in the show, the blouse, is, um, is a, a combination of crepe de chine and then how about that one? Yeah, they're just, uh, I just, this one is a combination of the crepe de chine and the how about that. And as you can see, crepe de chine falls very nicely. It has a kind of beautiful way of moving. And that was the one, that is in the exhibition as well. Beautiful. I love how colorful they are. Absolutely stunning. This is based on rocks. I was working and I look at the rocks and I quite find the beautiful structure there. And I designed this little piece. Um, I, I have um, another one, which is in the show. This is interesting. This is a combination of silk, and linen. You see, the, it's, it's kind of opaque, 
It has a texture, and I love textures, so that's a combination of silk and linen. Beautiful. Can you just show us really quickly which one is your favorite piece at the moment? Like which, which pattern did you find the most um, attractive? Well, <laughs> as I work with such a lot of, a lot of things, I find uh, things like, for example, that, that is inspired by Japan. The Japanese kind of, of herbs and things. It's a combination of line and flower. So I love pattern of, of any kind. Sometimes um, I, when nature also is very inspiring and is, is also very balanced. So you can use in it, you can balance your, your piece also in a very nice way. But I will show you another one, which is rather impressive because in that one, I don't use color. I, I don't use color, it's only black and white. And that has been inspired, if I can find it here. I, I had it on my, my thing, but it seems to have fallen or disappeared somewhere. It was in white, black and white that, uh, that totally fell off. So I cannot, I cannot show it to you, unfortunately. That's okay. Uh, this one is also in the shop. It's a collection of squares. Look at the black and white. Um, uh, in squares here. Um, that is in the show as well. This one also is in the show. It has also quite a number of patterns. You can see the background is, is a different pattern than the other one. And it just simply move. Uh, and this one is, a, this one I don't have in the, in the show, but this one is in the show. It's there. This one is, is like looking at the, at the plot. This is a little one. Oh, it has gone. Hello? Yeah, we're here. Ah, <laughs> uh, here is the black and white I wanted. Ah, okay. That's, That's based okay. In, an, in, a, in a winter, in the winter. So you go out and you see the black and white and the snow in the trees. Right. Which for me is quite difficult to do because I am used to color. I love color. My I can see you love color. I can see color. that. I mean. But I, I just simply thought I must try black and white because I must be able to produce something in black and white. Of and that course. was one of, the, one of the results. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Clara. That very was wonderful. Very thank important. you very much for uh, giving me the opportunity to talk to you all. And I hope that the, my pieces can attract you and you feel very happy to, to get one of them. Wonderful. Well, thank you everyone for joining us for this session. Um, Clara's work is available for purchase at her online shop right now. So go ahead and have a look. Um, I've also put a link in the chat box below if you want to just click that and it'll take you directly to her shop. So thank you everyone.